Hey everybody, I've got myself a little 15 amp inlet. Now it's an inlet because if you notice there, it's for plugging into. So what you have here is you have the ability to plug in a 15 amp wire. Now in this case, it's 12 gauge. So um, they don't tell you this in the NEMA code, the National Electrical, you know, but the thing is, is that 12 gauge will handle 22 amps through this before it becomes melted goo. Um, that's why they tell you, you know, that you want to go 15. You want to have a margin of safety. But if, if you'll notice here, it is polarized and it is made to snugly fit onto the end of a cord. So seals in real nice and it has a little cover and the cover is made of such a vinyl that's extremely durable for being out in the weather. Um, when you have this with what I'm going to use it for, you need the cover because, well, one, you keep trash out of it, and two, you want to make sure no one sticks their fingers in there because, well, it'll be a live circuit. And anytime that the uh, unit's plugged in at the park, um, although I will have a switch that will disconnect it, but, you know, if you're just going to stop for a little while, run a generator or something, well, this will keep it safe enough. And the way that it's designed is for me to mount it into the wall, going into the wall of my RV. And I'm going to show you that here in just a second. We're going to mount it into the wall. And the reason this is going here is because this cable, which is a six foot long cable, will go from my pickup truck where I have a 3000 watt inverter, a, a pack of batteries and solar on the roof from my pickup to my camper. I can drive down the highway with a 305 watt load of my refrigerator running, keeping it cold on the electrical side of the circuit. No problems whatsoever. And don't have to run the propane, which is actually very dangerous to do. And I do not recommend that you run propane um, in your refrigerator um, if you're going down the highway. Uh, they have been known to literally uh, blow the flame out and the electronic ignition might try to fire it back up and the whole time that area filling up with gas so it has happened and RVs are not built that well so when they blow up they really make a mess the uh, the thing is is that this comes with this little ring here for mounting into a, like a metal bulkhead or wall or in a car body and it also comes with this this boot to keep insects and other moisture out of your electrical connections now in this one's case it gives you the definitions what you're dealing with the silver screw will be common the green will be ground and the black will be your hot wire pretty simple setup 12 gauge it actually can handle up to 10 gauge and very nice tight fit so what we're going to do is we're going to take a brand new uh, i think i've used it maybe once or twice uh, heavy 12 gauge cord that is made to handle what we're going to do. And it's going to be ran inside the chase, not, not hidden, but inside the chase that's on the back of the wall um, in my RV. Don't worry, it's safe. Um, you know, it's got shielded here and shielding on the wires themselves. Uh, for the times that we're driving down the highway, and it's a 25 foot cord, but we're going to cut it to length and we're going to run it to the uh, utility box that's inside the RV out back out to the front to this little thing so that I can plug into it as I go down the roadway so let me show you how we're going to get that the first step is taking a two inch hole saw bit and drilling through the body of your RV now be very aware that you could hit electrical wires in your RV generally they do not try to put them uh, for just the convenience of the people who build them, they don't usually put them anywhere between 18 inches and lower. Um, not very often. Uh, the reason is is because that's that's kind of uh, above their waist height. They want it at their chest height so they can reach in and pull all the wires. Easy to do for them. Sometimes a pain in the ass for you if you're trying to change a window. But we're going to drill this and get this mounted and wired and I'm going to show you a few steps and why this works so good then we're going to power everything up with my pickup truck power the whole unit up with my pickup truck and my truck with that 3000 watt Potec slash peak inverter um, 
any of these parts here like this, uh, I'll put a link down there, but the Potec is a good inverter, powerful enough to run everything. And this little thing here, I'll put a link where I got it at. They're very handy. It gives you uh, the orientation for it so that you mount it correctly. Look down at the bottom of the video at the upload date, and I will put links to any of the stuff that I use. It makes it a little easier. You get in there, you can see the parts, you can see the review, you can read the specs. And otherwise, I'd be filling up the entire thing down there where it says upload date or somewhere in a post. And people would make me crazy wanting to know all the answers. Here's the answers. Look at the links. Go to the links. Read the information. If it fits your need, there you go. You're already there. All right. So we're going to start the process by making it ready for the cord. And the cord will be secured. I'll show you how it goes. It'll be out of the way, safe. And this will run everything that I need while I'm going down the highway or if I stop at a park somewhere or for a short period of, you know, pulling over the side of the road, it'll do everything I need. All right, so let's get out there and get that started. All right, so in my case, I'm outside now and you'll see the frame. I've got a big two by six box frame on this trailer and you will see it right over here that I have a nice spot right out here on the wall uh, down low out of the way of everything and I can even put an additional cover plate if I want to and I might do that uh, rocks and things might want to hit it so we're gonna probably look into that but we're gonna come through right down there and mount this little uh, unit or this little receptacle that is an inlet for 115 volts at 15 amps plus or minus I'd say so let's get inside and we'll do that and you guys see how well lit up we are now if you looked at my previous videos this came out pretty nice okay now we've got uh, the underneath the couch open and ready and that's where the wires are going to go they're also going to be ran down here with a heater unit it goes underneath and through there uh, the wires will be ran down here and we will be able to run them on this nailer board right down here all the way because we're replacing all of this old piping with uh, uh, PEX piping that will be all new and it will go up and over so that it all fully drains, which is what the RV manufacturers never give a damn about. All right, now what I've done is I've got the, the inlet receptacle already set up here, everything on it. Make sure that you've got your parts on there because they're a hassle to try to get on after the fact. You have to take it apart. And if you'll take and cut your wire down at the other end and slip on your protection boot, you'll be able to have it down here at this end ready for you. Now, I've already got it to where I have the, the hot on black, which is the black wire, the ground on green, which is the green wire, and the silver will be the white wire. And make sure you do a fine twisting of this to firm up the wires. Sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error. And make sure you get a full makeup. So you're looking at 3 eighths stripped, 3 eighths of the end of the wire stripped to fully fit in. And you'll see how when it goes in, tighten up your screw on it firmly. Give it a good tug. Check all your wires. Make sure they're good. Make sure you don't have any stray wires touching anywhere in here because when you power it up, the last thing you need is an arc inside the wall of something you've just put this in. Now, in my case, we're going to just slide this boot over and the hole is already drilled. I will be taking a little bit of this weld because I want to make sure that you see the bare wires there. That's exactly why I use this. Um, it'll do a nice job of coating that and we have it ready to go in. Okay, now we've decided we've got it put right here uh, near the frame so that I can have the wire, the extension cord from the truck fed through here to where it will come up and plug into this and be secured. So we're going to go ahead and you have to make sure you have this orientated correctly because there is a drain hole down here in the very bottom in case moisture does get in here. So in my case, we're going to push this in, get it squared, and go ahead and start putting the screws in through the flange. Now you'll notice the flange also has little holes in it for the screws. And we'll finish putting the screws in on this, go inside and lay the cable out up inside the cabinets, out of the way of everything where it can be damaged.
Okay, now what we have is we have the wire has now been brought in and it is secured and going up to ground to the common and to the hot where the factory had put in that jumper. So if we want to disconnect the switch, that's this is the incoming power. Now it goes from this incoming power and then divides it to everywhere. So I can actually disconnect the green one here and that will pull me away from the outside outlet that uh, you might see in my previous video, how I redone that. And will allow all power to come in just through that. Now, of course, it's only gonna be 15 amps, so you can't run a whole lot of stuff at one time, but you can run refrigerator at, uh, you know, 290 to 320 watts, depending on, you know, it's cycling. But uh, I just figure 500 watts covers that just fine, which is about four and a half amps. Now, the, uh, the air conditioner will run on nine and a half amps uh, with a initial su uh, surge of 13 amps, so there'll be no problem. This 12 gauge will more than enough carry it. It is uh, pure copper and it will carry it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to unplug the whole unit, the whole trailer, and then we're going to power this from my pickup truck and see if everything powers back on effectively, including the converter that's right now running the lights. Um, so all the lighting in the whole place will run from that. Um, the heating unit would run from the converter, if not from batteries. We don't have the batteries in this unit yet. And um, all the wire has been neatly tucked away down here along the inside and we're going to put over a little piece of uh, channel that's going to cover it all the way down anywhere where it might have a problem so let's see what we get by powering the whole thing up off the truck let's try that out all right now we've come around back here where i'm going to disconnect from my if you go look at my previous video you'll see how i did this up real nice and that allows me to just store this down here and we've glued that shut and lock we can lock it up inside there and you'll see how i've done that pretty good uh previous video there so we're going to kill it and now all power is out in the trailer and we'll lay this down and we're going to have the 12 gauge cord because i have to replace a breaker on the going on my truck We'll take the 12 gauge cord here and we're going to run over and as you can see it's 100% not plugged in the wall that orange cord don't run nothing so we're gonna go over here to my truck and um, we're gonna start out by going to our new outlet and opening it up I believe it's negative it shows it shows it being ground up so that the ground ground upwards so that that drain hole right there allows this thing never to hold any water. And we'll push it in. You can see that. Get it in the hole there. There we go. And we're going to now power up my 3000 watt inverter that's on the side of the, that is inside the truck. and. There's the big battery bank. There's the solar power from the roof coming down on it. And this trailer will have solar also, but this way we can have just nonstop power. So, all right, lights on. We'll do this little checklist and we're going to plug it in right now. So you can watch here and watch the trailer. There we go. And there's the load. I don't know if you can see that. See it? There's the load right there. So it's pulling about 1600 watts right now. There we are. We are running the entire RV off of my truck. So here we go. Now there's new vents to be put in and there's the power. Now that plug that's on the outside is closed, isolated, unless you reach in there and stick your fingers in, which I wouldn't recommend you won't get shocked but this can run down the road and the refrigerator can cool lights are on in the refrigerator and it can cool and keep your food frozen 
It can fire your electronic ignition, running every light in here. There's no batteries, and I can prove that to you by showing you the fact that we have yet to put batteries back in it. All right, guys. Well, there is my little setup. And get that out of here. That's from when we were working with some power tools. Notice it don't shut nothing off except for maybe Emma. Uh, um, so you can see, there it is. Now, the outlet that's in the back of my truck back here, um, I'm going to have to redo that. Uh, I didn't realize that we hadn't changed the breaker on it, so I won't run it without that breaker. Um, but the cord is right down here, and it plugs in. So, I mean, it doesn't have to have a breaker. So I think I'm just going to run it straight and redo it. But there we are, and you can see when I pull the power, the whole trailer will go dead. So now we already know this inverter will run an air conditioning unit on an RV. So what do you do when you're driving down the highway? Plug it in, cool that sucker down before you get in it. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all be good. I do believe we're done. Look at Anna Mae, she looks ghostly.